Avebury is a village in the North Wessex Downs in Wiltshire. It is about five and a half miles west of Marlborough and eight miles northeast of Devizes. Much of the village is encircled by the Neolithic Henge Monument containing three stone circles. One of the best known prehistoric sites in Britain, it contains the largest megalithic stone circle in the world and is both a tourist attraction and a place of religious importance to contemporary pagans. Constructed over several hundred years in the 3rd millennium BC, during the Neolithic or New Stone Age, the monument comprises a large henge, a large circular bank with an internal ditch, with a large outer stone circle and two separate smaller stone circles situated inside the centre of the monument. Its original purpose is unknown, although archaeologists believe that it was most likely used for some form of ritual or ceremony. The Avebury Monument is part of a larger prehistoric landscape containing several older monuments nearby, including West Kennet Long Barrow and Silbury Hill. By the Iron Age, the site had been effectively abandoned, with some evidence of human activity on the site during the Roman occupation. During the early Middle Ages, a village first began to be built around the monument, eventually extending into it. In the late medieval and early modern periods, local people destroyed many of the standing stones around the Henge, both for religious and practical reasons. However, the antiquarians John Aubrey and William Stukeley took an interest in Avebury during the 17th century and recorded much of the site before its destruction. Archaeological investigation followed in the 20th century led primarily by Alexander Keeler, who oversaw a project which reconstructed much of the monument. Well, it's great to be here in Avebury. I have been here before a couple of times, I think, but both times would have been a very, very long time ago. But it's not the kind of place, for obvious reasons, that you forget, really. It's a pretty village, but the stones here are just absolutely amazing. Now, today, it's another drizzly day and quite grey here in the North Wessex Downs, but I'm going to do a walk today, so I'm hoping that this is going to be the worst it's going to get. Avebury is owned and managed by the National Trust. It has been designated a scheduled ancient monument, as well as a World Heritage Site. I followed the path that ran along the top of the Henge. This circular bank measures over 1,000 metres in circumference. The Henge's construction was a huge task. The ditch was cut through hard chalk with antler picks and stone mauls and it is estimated that over 90,000 cubic metres of material weighing 165,000 tonnes was excavated. It has been speculated that it was likely built for defensive purposes. Soon the path dropped down to Cross Green Street, a lane running east from the village. I discovered that the path was closed off along the next section of the Henge, so I took the path entering a field, which took me closer to the stones in this part of the circle. The stone circle has been used several times as a filming location. 
It was used in the 1972 short film Lucifer Rising, and for the 1998 film Still Crazy. Avebury was also the setting for the 1977 cult television series Children of the Stones, that depicts Avebury, renamed Milbury, as a town controlled by the Stones. Also in 1977, it was the location for the BBC's A Ghost Story for Christmas episode, Stigma. I was nearly at the end of the path around the stone circle, so I looked to explore more of Avery Village before starting the walk I was planning to do. However, the rain was not looking like it was going to stop any time soon, so I was beginning to have second thoughts. In the meantime, I passed through the old farmyard, now housing the Alexander Keeler Museum. It contains the remains of a prehistoric child called Charlie, who was found by Alexander Keeler. The museum houses one of the most important prehistoric archaeological collections in Britain. Next to the museum is St James's Church. It has an 11th century Saxon nave in which two original Saxon windows survive. In the 13th century, the church's dedication was recorded as All Saints, but it now bears a dedication to St. James. The church is Grade 1 listed. Well, although I'm having a really nice day wandering around Avebury, this rain is proving to be a real pain in the arse, so I'm not going to do the walk that I was planning to do. So what I'm going to do instead is just continue enjoying Avebury, and I might have a little look around Avebury Manor. I was disappointed about the walk, but I felt it would have been daft of me to attempt it in this weather. So with my mind set on not doing the walk now, I took a more leisurely wander through Avebury Village. The village has no school, following closure of the primary school in 2007. This school, on the high street opposite the church, began as a national school in 1844, then was rebuilt in 1849 and enlarged in 1873. In 1970, a new school was built behind the original, and the old building became a social club for the community. Avebury receives thousands of visitors every year and has excellent facilities including a large car park, restaurant, pub and shops. The Hen Shop, which is not owned or managed by the National Trust or English Heritage, is one of the only independent businesses in the World Heritage Site, selling its own stock including jewellery, clothing, dowsing rods, minerals, fossils and books on a variety of subjects. Next door is the Avebury Community Shop, the main village store.
The village pub, the Red Lion, a Grade Two listed farmhouse, claims to be the only pub in the world to be enclosed by a stone circle. The Red Lion was first licensed in 1802 and is famous for its 86 foot deep well dating from the late 16th century. And whilst the weather is proving to be unpredictable, I think it would be rude of me whilst I'm here in Avebury not to try a local ale from the Red Lion Inn. Well, I am on holiday. And that's exactly what I did. I enjoyed half a pint of ale called Avebury Well Water, which went down nicely as I sheltered in the cosy bar from the rain. Afterwards, I went back outside and walked over to Avery Chapel. Until recently, it was a place of worship and was also used as a tourist information centre, but this closed in 2011, and with a dwindling congregation, the chapel was put up for sale in 2015. Thankfully, the National Trust stepped forward and purchased the chapel to secure its future. As I now wouldn't be doing the walk I had originally planned to do, I decided to visit Avery Manor and Garden, located in the centre of the village, next to St James's Church. It is a National Trust property, consisting of a Grade 1 listed early 16th century manor house and its surrounding garden. In 2011, Avebury Manor was the subject of the BBC One television series, The Manor Reborn, in which the house was refurbished by a group of experts in collaboration with the National Trust. The refurbishment of Avebury Manor was designed so that the rooms reflected the period in which the residents of the manor lived, and you can learn about these people as you go around. Furniture and objects were either recreated by modern craftsmen, or genuine antique furniture was restored. All the new furniture needed to be made strong enough to be used, sat on and touched. One of the most unique things about Avery Manor is that you are not kept away with barriers. You are encouraged to sit on the furniture, lie on the beds and play snooker in the billiard room. The only exception being the Chinese hand-painted wallpaper in the Georgian dining room, which will damage if touched. Well, now that I've come outside of the manor, it's brightening up now. Back outside, I walked around the garden. This delightful garden is arranged as a series of rooms, each with a different character, including kitchen garden, topiary garden, lion's walk, church garden, east garden, half moon garden, orchard, monk's garden, and South Lawn. The garden is a wonderful place to relax and enjoy. As I walked around to experience the garden's beauty and tranquillity, what particularly fascinated me was its exhibition of wonderful outdoor sculptures.
I spoke too soon. It's drizzling again. Never mind, it's still lovely here. It had been lovely exploring Avery Manor and Garden. An unexpected bonus, which more than compensated for my not doing my walk I had originally wanted to do. Anyway, it was nearly time for me to make my way home. But before heading off straight away, I followed the path back around the stone circle. Well, despite the wet weather, I've still had a great day here in Avebury. I didn't do the walk that I'd planned to do, but I managed to come up with a good alternative. I can always find something else to do if the weather turns bad on me. It's been really nice exploring the village, because I'd forgotten how nice Avebury village is. Avebury Manor was interesting, and of course the highlight are these wonderful ancient stones. I do hope it's not too long before I return to the North Wessex Downs.